Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, today is Thursday, February the 11th. Uh, today um, on the show, we have uh, Kristen Powers with us today, aka KP from Art Foamies, and she's going to show us some really neat things to do with Art Foamies. Um, if you've never seen them before, you will be amazed. Uh, so it's just going to be a great show. Uh, also, we're going to have some great Valentine ideas for you today as well. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, there's just so many things to do um, for Valentine's Day. So it's something that we just kind of thought would be uh, another thing to brighten people's day. And uh, so we did a little bit of decorating behind us. You can see I've uh, just done some quick little flowers and, and some decorations and a uh, wreath that we uh, remade. So we'll get to that a little bit later in the show. So uh, welcome everybody and hope that uh, everybody's doing well. I know in many regions, um, uh, through Canada and the United States and over in uh, Europe as well. Uh, a lot of cold weather, a lot of snow. Um, I know sometimes we complain when we're like minus 14, minus 15, and I'm seeing in Saskatoon and in Saskatchewan and Manitoba and that sort of thing that they're much colder than that. So yeah, that's uh, just, it's winter, right? We just have to come to the realization that it is winter and and uh, yeah, so that we just uh, enjoy the time, uh, enjoy the cold and, and uh, what things do you do during the winter time outside? Since it's, uh, they say it's the best place for us to do things, to be healthy. Uh, so, you know, going for a walk, going snowshoeing, going cross country skiing, um, just getting out there, maybe even just a nice campfire. I know I enjoy campfire and I see Janice my friend is on and I know she enjoys a nice campfire as well hi Janice <laughs> anyway today I just wanted to um, first talk a bit about Valentine's Day since it is this weekend this is kind of the Valentine's weekend so to speak um, and uh, every year Valentine's occurs on February 14th uh, comes uh, across Canada the United States and in other places all around the world. Um, things like candy and flowers and gifts are exchanged between loved ones, all in the name of St. Valentine's. Uh, while many of the cultures feel that Valentine's Day is only for love-struck couples, it's a day of love and a day that uh, of love that can be for anybody, of course. Uh, all kinds of love uh, should be celebrated, whether it's, you know, with your parents, with your children, with your sibling. Um, and another word I <clears throat> have seen lately is the galantine, which is with your gal friends. Yep. There are so many ways that we can show our love, uh, appreciation and gratitude for other people. Oh, Catherine. Catherine says it's a balmy minus two in the UK. Yes, and I'm sure you've had some snow, I think, in the UK as well. I know that we've got some relatives over in Holland and they have, uh, in the Netherlands, and they have quite a bit of snow over there as well. So, uh, and Brenda, hi, Brenda from, from uh, Alberta. Hey, Mark from Dundas. Uh, thanks for popping on, so many of you, and uh, checking out what we have uh, going today. We're going to have a great show. There's so much going on, so I'm just going to continue with this. Um, <clears throat> A Valentine's Day, yes, at home with your family. Like we always have in our family have spent Valentine's Day as the family. And, uh, you know, and start the day with a nice breakfast, maybe some heart-shaped foods or just some red fruit uh, to bring the festivities of it. And wearing red, that's why I got my red sweatshirt on today, wearing red, pink or hearts, just to give that festive love feeling for the day. Uh, decorate a bit about around the house. As you can see, like I said, the decorations I did behind me. Um, also, I made um, this wreath. What area is it? wreath, I think on that side. Um, it was a wreath from um, Christmas time that uh, I actually had, this was what was on it. So you can see it's kind of had its day. I think a couple, uh, this in particular needs to come off. <laughs> Some of these other pieces I can use, but that's what was on that wreath back behind me there. Uh, so I took that off and then I had found a couple of red, uh, hearts. So I painted them red. And then I thought, what else am I going to do? So I actually had these art foamy pieces. <clears throat> you can see I had a, a larger heart and a smaller heart. So 
just great that Chris is going to be on the show today. So I used my art foamies and just did red. I could have done different colors of red, I guess, but um, I just did red and I stamped them on just like a thicker um, watercolor paper or, you know, whatever type of paper you may have. I cut them out and I just glued them onto the wreath. So I glued a couple on the wreath uh, with a couple of the red hearts as well. And then the bow was already on there. I had a red bow on there from... Um, Christmas time. So that was perfect to just uh, to, to have all that incorporated. So um, also I wanted to show you, I found just a couple easy uh, ideas here and hopefully it's going to let me, oh, maybe not. Uh, I'll show them later. <laughs> Some different ideas of decorating uh, that I found as well. Um, but you could do um, different things that you can do during the holidays or the Valentine's season, I guess it is, uh, taking a virtual crafting class is really a neat idea. There's so many neat uh, crafting classes out there. And Holly Hanley is actually doing a free class uh, on Friday. It's called Who is Coming to Get Your Sparkle On? Uh, Friday, February the 12th at 6.30 Central Time. Uh, let me see. I'm just going to quickly show a little promo video she had uh, just to kind of get an idea of what it's all about and <laughs> hi everyone it's holly hanley and i'm so excited to tell you about my free facebook live class it's this friday february 12th at 6 30 central standard time and we're going to be painting this cute little snowman don't you just love them it's called all you need is love and we're going to be using all kinds of fun deco art products and glitters and we're just and there's going to be prizes deco art donated a prize pack that you can win as well as some brushes from princeton i've got some pattern packs it's going to be so much fun so if you go to my holly hanley painting designs and classes page and click like or follow you'll get a notification of when the class is and you can find this pattern that includes this cute little pork sitter um, on my website it's hollyhanley.ca so i hope to see you then Bye now. So that's great. Thank you, Holly. And uh, yeah, I think that would be so cute. So, I mean, there's lots of different things that you can do. And that's just one of them. Um, you know, things like baking cakes, baking uh, special things for Valentine's Day. Um, maybe I think some of you like to make cards. So making a card um, and dropping it off at a friend's place with a little chocolate or something on it always is great. It'll make their day. Um, and writing letters. I think many of us just don't write letters and cards enough anymore. And I think right now people do appreciate getting mail not just an email but actually getting mail i know um that valentine's day is only in two days but uh you know even if they get it next week they'll much appreciate it um you know and that way you can just send something to the people that are important in your life as well uh, a letter of gratitude or a friendship can go a long way in making your loved ones feel very special uh, there are so many different ways to celebrate those um, that are special in our lives and in your lives. Maybe you can share a few things of how you can share your love with those that are in your life. You know, maybe just put it there in the post uh, so that maybe we can take a look at some of the different uh, ways that you're going to celebrate Valentine's this weekend. I also have a video of uh, some great um ideas of uh decorating three easy valentine projects to do um that honestly they are yes very easy val oh here I, oh, no first i'm going to show share with you this one sorry i found it here is my uh a couple ideas i had for valentines uh so here the first one is um a runner so it basically is just made out of hearts and uh, you can just glue the hearts together and put them down the middle of your table. And I just think that's a great idea of uh, how you can decorate um, and uh, decorate the table, decorate different things through the, the Valentine's uh, celebration or if you're having a meal, even if it's with your family or with others. Uh, also, we had this Valentine gal canvas gallery. Uh, so it's um, just different canvases. So you can use small canvases or you can even use uh, watercolor paper that you can put on something. And uh, it says, you know, instead of purchasing canvases or just purchase a few canvases, I know the Dollar Tree, Dollarama, or you might just have some around. 
and using different things like pom-pom and string, or uh, I can see there, there's even some foam uh, hearts and some glitter. I can see one of the hearts is with glitter. And that's something really easy to do uh, with your kids, with the grandkids, um, just to, to have something that you can have around through the Valentine's week, but also just to continue having it out. You know, there's always that time between Valentine's and Easter where you know, it was kind of springtime, but not quite yet. So great to have something like that decorating. Uh, and then this one down below, it's a, sorry, I'm kind of moving myself. I'm not sure if you see that. <laughs> it's a love you so much garland. Uh, so you can just put up some, uh, make a garland uh, with the, there's one there with hearts that you could just glue onto a string, some words, love you so much, or just love, love, love. So that's just some more ideas of quick and easy things that you can do um, for Valentine's. So I'm going to also share with you uh, a quick a deco art about three uh, easy Valentine crafts that you can do as well that they uh, shared with me to share with you. So enjoy. Thank you, DecoArt, for sharing that with us. That was great. Uh, so nice to have some creative things, quick things that we can do during the different holiday seasons. So um, yeah, much of those I think are very easy for most of you to do. Uh, things you might have around the house or you can you know, use uh, other things and variations. So uh, thank you, Holly. Thank you, DecoArt. And make sure that you guys sign up. If you're available on Friday, sign up for for Holly's free class. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. Like she said, she's always full of sparkles and, and uh, just makes your day. So thank you, Holly. Um, today, our live guest with us today is uh, Kristen Powers, aka KP. She is a designer, instructor, uh, illustrator, painter, and creative moonbeam. She lives in Louisiana, Missouri and is married to her best friend and business partner. She also has three amazing kids and a spoiled cat. <laughs> she was until age, until 2011 at age 45, a self-taught mixed media artist. Uh, and at that time she went on to receive her BFA in studio art from Maryland University in St. Louis. In 2012, she took over the Rubber Moon Art Stamps Company and merged her love of paper crafts and illustration with her passion for art. Uh, she purchased art for me in 2020 uh, from uh, Emmy. A lot of you know Emmy for that was from uh, uh, Canada. And she continues to share her love of stamping and mixed media. So we are really excited to have Kristen on the show today. Hello, Kristen. 
Hi, how are you? I'm sorry. I need to find my other uh, video. I knew this no would problem. happen. I'm not that good at this yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. No problem. We're just glad to have you with us here today. I don't, I can't find my other um, camera. Usually there's like two cameras here. So hold on really fast. Okay. Oh, here it is. It's just, yeah. Yay. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Hello. Sorry about that. I knew, I knew I would mess it up. No, there's no messing it up here. Okay. This is this is real. We just like to keep it real. So well, thanks for having me. It's so nice to be here. Well, I'm just so excited to have you on the show. I've always loved the art foamy product and how versatile it is and and uh, using it in so many different ways. Plus your the stamping products that you carry as well. So it's just I'm excited to have you on and see all Thank that you, you have. So yeah. yeah. So I was one thing I wanted to ask you first is the nickname KP. So where did that come from? So, well, a couple of different, <laughs> it's kind of funny when I was in school. So I was um, already 41 when I went back to school. And so obviously many of the people I were, was in school with were, you know, 18. And I made friends with this girl who I, I always gave her rides every morning to school. And she was just the sweet, like so cute and bubbly. And she would always come out and say hi KP and I just I don't it just always made me feel so good and then um whenever I got back into the stamping world later I um just I like the acronym I like the simplicity of it and I wanted uh to kind of separate my art and now from what I had done years ago so yeah. oh, awesome. it just stuck with me well, it is very unique. I, I love it because I mean, you're Kristen <laughs> Powers, which yes. is KP, and then you just kind of took it to the next level. So yeah, that's great. <laughs> well, it has to do too with graphic design. I did a lot of graphic design in school and everything was, you really want to simplify everything to the basic level. So I took my initials and spelled them phonetically. I thought I was being so clever. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, and also, how did you get involved in the creative art industry then? Like, when did this whole journey of yours start? Oh my gosh. So my parents actually owned a rubber stamp company. Um, they started in 1997 and it was called Effie Glitz Fingers St. Louis. Well, we had a store. It was called Effie Glitz Fingers Rubber Art Stamp Emporium. <laughs> my mom liked really long name. And then um, that's a mouthful. Yeah. I think you needed to shorten that one. Yeah. Out. Well, it was just Effie. Everybody just said Effie's. Effie yeah. Glitz Fingers. Yeah. And then um, so a lot, you know, that was many years ago. And um, that's kind of what started me on the stamping journey. Because then when I went back to school many years later, and graduated in 2011, um, I said, I don't know really what I want to do with myself and the opportunity to uh, buy Rubber Moon, which was it was funny, there was a lot of parallels with the company um, was started the same year as my parents company started Rubber, Rubber Moon Art Stamps. And so there was just a lot of serendipitous things. And so I ended up going back to my rubber stamping roots and buying rubber moon and then i'm having it for eight years now so and then the opportunity to buy art foamies came up uh in the end of 2019 early 2020 and um even though it's a completely different kind of stamp than rubber stamps i just love them i love yeah. them so much so they're super fun <laughs> perfect perfect yeah it, it just gets to for me, it really just gets to incorporate everything I love. And then I get to work with so many other wonderful artists too. You know, it's not just all about me and my art. It's just so many, I never get bored. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. I can. Well, that's one one thing I've seen. Like, how do you? I'm looking behind you, and there's just so much creative. Like, it's so creative. Everything behind. So, how do you decide what you're going to do every day, or what your task for that week is? Like, I, I it, yeah. Like what creativity comes out, what new things, how do you find new oh. stamps, new ideas? Oh my gosh. I just, I have to say, I never, ever, it's not one of my, I know a lot of artists say like, oh, I'm, you know, I can't find my muse or I, and I'm not saying that every day is just rainbows and unicorns, but I mean, <laughs> like I never am at a lack for ideas or I just have a lot of I guess that's, it's a blessing and a curse, really. I feel that way because um, it's, it is really constant. It's just uh, yeah. ongoing. Luckily, I will say I usually sleep very well. <laughs> so not for long amounts of time, but my brain just, it shuts down. And then um, whenever I'm awake, it's always going. <laughs> 
that's always. Good. That's yeah. good because my brain doesn't shut down. <laughs> I go to bed at night and I might fall asleep, but then within a couple hours, also no, I wake up and then it just starts again. It's yeah. Well, I do. I mean, it's always on when yeah. I'm awake. I mean, I can just, you know, and that's good. Like I said, it is a blessing and a curse, but I never, I don't know. People will say what inspires you. And I more say what doesn't. Yeah. 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 So how do you decide which artists you're going to work with or, you know, within this oh. stamping and art foamy, like there's just so many amazing artists out there. It is. And, you know, I think also that it just finds a way like that's kind of serendipitous too. And, you know, it's just like in, with anything, you meet people that you're drawn to or that are drawn to you and timing. A lot of times there's plenty of artists that I would love to work with, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. I mean, it's not, you know, it, yeah, so yeah. I don't um, honestly, the way that we usually find people is either referral or, you know, they'll approach us uh, every now and then I'll approach somebody, but um, yeah. And it just worked, you know, one of those things that just works out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a lot though. We have, um, oh my gosh, I think 16 for art foamies now. Wow. And I think um, somewhere around the same for rubber moon. Yeah. And they're completely different. Only a couple are crossovers. You know, like yeah. Natalie Kalbach, she designs for rubber moon stamps and art foamies. Oh, um, another wonderful person. We had her on yeah. the show there a few months yes. back. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so perfect. Perfect. Now, talk a little bit about your art foamies fun Friday at five with Kate. <laughs> I, I know. That's like, so cool. I must have got the long name thing for my mom. <laughs> um, art foamy fun Friday at five, and that's central time because I'm in Missouri. Um, so every Friday at 5 p.m. Central, I just go live and do some sort of either a project or um, just I call them makeys. I, let's get makey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so we just get makey for anywhere from like 20 minutes, maybe sometimes even up to an hour. It's always um, sometimes it'll be a new launch of a new line or it might be a new artist or it could be just an, an artist that's already you know, with us that is launching a new, uh, some new stamps. Um, or if I don't have anything brand new, then we'll just do something fun. Oh, awesome. <laughs> and it's usually spontaneous, just, yeah. you know, just to get in the studio and play with art foamies. Cause they are, like you had said earlier, they're so versatile and there's just, you know, um, I think one of the things that makes them so much different, um, well, a couple of things, but the size, you know, that you can, there's, um, you can really have a lot larger of an art foamy stamp. So they are great for like home decor. You can do floors, walls, lampshades. I mean, table runners, you know, all that kind of stuff. Not that you can't do it with rubber stamps, but you know, they're just, they have a little more surface. You know, yeah. Surface. So big heart, uh, little heart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, and I think they do make a great crossover too for card makers and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's what, that's Art Foamy Fun Friday. We just, and is that on your Art Foamy Facebook page? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, so they can Foamy. just key in yeah, Art Foamy. Follow us, follow Art Foamy's on Facebook. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, and what are you demonstrating for us today? Let's just get to some sort of a okay, make so and take here. You, you want me to turn it to my sure. table? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I can and do I will, it now. <laughs> I will pin you so that you're nice and big so everybody can see what you're doing and all right so and i feel so bad i was like oh i should have done something with hearts and then but this is still something you can do some beautiful you know mail if you want to give a gift of a card um the beautiful i'm going to just show you a little bit of water coloring with art foamy stamps and how to make a different colorways so i sort of did just a four um, four ways here. So you could sort of get like a winter, spring, summer, fall sort of look. Um, we're really just using a couple stamps. Um, this is a new, it's a set of art foamies. It's three leaves. Maybe it's just so cold here. I know it's cold where you are too, right? So it's so freezing. I was like, I need yes. something springy <laughs> or something colorful. So um, I wanted to just show how to do four different colorways using your watercolors and your art foamies. And then you could take that and make it into a beautiful greeting card. Or of course, it would make a great journal page if you do art journaling. So what I have here is a sheet of watercolor paper. It's 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. So it is, you know, rather heavy. And um, I've taken some delicate surface painter's tape right here. 
and just done a little grid. Um, I don't know if I'm perfectly symmetrical, but you want to do it about in quarters, you know, in half and in half again. And then I do have watercolors here. I have two watercolors. Um, and I know I can't really pull out my palette uh, on the side. It's rather large and quite heavy, but it is just like a, a porcelain plate. So I have some of the colors squeezed out. Um, I have a beautiful kind of green, a couple of greens, and then this pink. I also chose, uh, if you wanted to, I chose this small word stamp. It's also an art film me by Gail Nation, and it just says joy. So I just wanted a little, maybe a little hint of a word in the background on that card. And here I've taken, I don't know if you know what a stamp buddy is, but we, um, for Art Ponies has what we call stamp buddies. And what they are is a sort of a plastic piece with a cut with a foam on top. And uh, I've taken some and cut them into strips because I really like to use these as applicators for my watercolor on my Art Ponies. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna wet this just a little bit. Okay, it's just a little clean water. And I'm gonna dip it into uh, some green watercolor and I have it there on my on my stamp buddy my and keep in mind this is cut okay I, I took a regular stamp buddy and then just uh, trimmed it to a smaller size and when I put my watercolor on my art foamy I don't want it to be super wet and juicy just you know as much pigment and of course if you want to do all four of these at once um, you know, you you definitely can, and that way you'll have plenty of. Let's push this up a little bit. Sorry about that. You'll have plenty of. You could use these as little postcards, or again for greeting card toppers, or things in your journal, whatever you want. And you're just gonna sort of mix and match. And you can switch colors. I'm gonna go to a little bit darker color now maybe mix a little bit of blue with my green. Now, so certainly one thing with the art foamies, you really can't go wrong. Yes, I know. They're just kind of foolproof, which makes them super fun, makes them really fun for kids too. And they're nice because they can grab them or anybody that has like a little dexterity, you know, problems with dexterity. It's kind of nice because they're, they're easy to grab and, um, have a nice little feel to them. Again, I'm gonna switch colors one more time. And I'm just gonna stamp off. The nice thing about using watercolor too with um, your art foamies is that you don't have to really worry about cleaning them too, or, you know, too much. Um, if you use acrylic paint, I definitely would suggest cleaning them off rather quickly with a, just a little running water, or if you don't have access to running water right at the time, definitely blot them off and then, um, you know, take them to running water as soon as you can, because you really don't want your acrylic paints to dry on there. It, they'll still work, but if your acrylic paints dry, then it will kind of change up the, you know, the surface of your stamp. And then finally, okay, here, I am going to blot this off um, as much as I can because I do want to switch colors now and I'm going to go to a little bit of a yellow. And again, this will just switching your colors. You're going to stamp pretty much everything the same, but switching up your colors is going to give you a completely different look. And then, of course, it's kind of nice too if you're playing in this way just to get, you know, a decent amount of work done and that way you have something you can cut up and use for your and of course if these were hearts then we could be making valentines <laughs> instead all right so there we just have our big stamp and then we can go in and a couple other little minis in there All right, 
And I'm just gonna now take my watercolor brush and dip right in here to my watercolors and start painting around. And for those of you who haven't um, experimented much with watercolor, um, I really recommend that you, you know, take your colors and just play a little bit with darks and lights. Maybe on this one, I'm using a lot of this quinacridone gold, which is this really beautiful, bright sort of gold. And I'm gonna take now a little bit of green gold and just retrace some of my areas, you wanna be sort of careful, um, or I don't know if careful is the right word, but just know that wherever it's kind of wet, it may bleed and blossom into the other wet areas. So if you don't want that, then you want to avoid any wet areas. And you can, that's one reason why I like to do like different quadrants like this too, is if I need to let areas dry, then I can switch and you know be moving around. Obviously, again, I sort of wanted to make it uh, for different colorways like winter, spring, summer, fall sort of feeling. So you're just going to go in and again. And what, brush, what brush are you using there? So I am using a very soft, this is called, uh, well, it's a Princeton is the brand and it's Velvet Touch. Um, and it's just a medium price point. It's not super expensive, but it's called a long round. And I do love these brushes because um, they come to a really nice point and yet they're quite, you know, full at, at the ferrule. So they'll hold a lot of water, but still come to a beautiful point. So you can get your, you can still, it'll hold a decent amount of wash, but you can still bring it to a nice point to do your detail. So I end up, it's a really a good workhorse brush for, for watercolor because, um, you know, it is a it's sort of medium, but again, you can get sort of that fine detail and it, um, you know, you can still put down a pretty large amount of water where you need to. And of course, if you're doing larger areas then you may want to, you know, switch and size up your brush a little bit. But again, and just keep, I'll just keep going in and sort of playing with this and, and doing little layers. So now I, you know, I put down, I stamped it in this sort of medium greenish blue. And now I'm going, I have a darker um, sort of a indigo blue. And again, just sort of going back over. I think it just gives it sort of a beautiful, you know, paint. It looks a little more painted rather than too stampy, which I like. And plus it's just super fun to paint these shapes. And this is what I call a thirsty brush. If you want to pull, like I got a puddle of water or a puddle of color there that I don't necessarily want. So I'm going to clean my brush off really well. And then I'm going to dry it out. And then I can pull some of that color away. And that's called using your thirsty brush to just manipulate your washes a little bit. A lot of comments. They love the leaves. They love the look of it. Looks very versatile. Someone even said, Wendy says that it's uh, very forgiving and you can stamp on uneven surfaces very well. So it has yes, and different. Yes. And to um, keep in mind that hot pre or cold press, and I'm sorry, I keep going down towards me. Um, cold press paper has a little bit of tooth to it. It's, it's a little bit bumpy. So um, you know, a, a lot of times, a lot of people that stamp really like to use hot press paper because it's smoother, um, which is great too. I love both, but I, you know, just want you to be aware that you can get a really nice stamping even on this sort of textured bumpy paper. And I will show you too, a larger piece of art that I did um, using this stamp too with, with the same technique is this, and I, I won't be able to show you the whole piece, but you can see, and I used that leaf, you see that leaf stamp in the background with the same technique. And then I used a little Beautiful. bit of what, so, you know, 
You can do large art pieces, small greeting cards, whatever you want, or just have fun. I, I um, love stamping and mixing it with paint so much. It's just, I feel like it just gives you a lot of freedom to, you know, experiment with your paints in ways that you might not be as comfortable if you are, you know, well, if you don't have a lot of experience or maybe you want to do watercoloring, but you don't necessarily want the pressure of drawing or, you know, so it, you can get a lot of really beautiful paintings. So I'll show you another one that I did. Again, the same exact technique um, with uh, three different stamps. And this is all watercolor. And just, like I said, three different stamps with this exact technique. Isn't that fun? <laughs> oh, that is fun. So much different color. <laughs> yeah. Anne was asking, uh, is it a 140 pound cold press, you said? Yes, this is cold press. The, but um, the other two paintings I just showed you, that big lady painting and the one I just pulled out were both on hot press. So again, definitely just experiment and have fun and, you know, use what you what you like and what you maybe you're familiar with. So my question, first of all, I'm just gonna say, Deborah says very pretty and the thirsty brush tip is great. Thank you. Yes. And great. what is the difference between, I mean, I don't do a lot of watercolor, cold press and hot press. Okay, I, so, I, and this will be, this will help you, I think a lot too, to remember. <clears throat> so when you think of hot press, think of something's iron smooth. When it's hot, it's iron smooth. And when it's cold, you have goosebumps. So it's bumpy. Ah. So for cold presses, bumpy and hot presses, smooth. Perfect. Great. Thank you. And yeah, so, and then of course, I'm going to just, I'll throw another quick little color on this one here. Um, it's really, again, just like with anything, sort of about the layers and, um, keep in mind too, one of the things that I do also love about art foamies is that <clears throat> most of them, you know, or many of them, I should say, are cut out. So instead of just having like a block that you have, you know, if it's cut out, it is easier to line back up. So if you don't, you know, if you don't have a perfect stamping the first time, generally, it's very easy to realign them and get it, you know, stamp back on there. But um, I think, <laughs> I think that was it. I, I thought I went to say something else, but I probably forgot. It's very versatile because I mean, you can, you're using this on the, the watercolor paper, but it's also, um, you know, you could be doing the same thing on wood or on canvas or, you know. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And also, um, well, keeping in mind that you can use, um, you know, definitely ink pads or acrylics, really any, I've even used, um, Pan pastels and watercolor crayons on art foamies. So it doesn't have to be watercolor. And then, of course, you know, the fun part too, once you're done with all this, um, is peeling up your peeling up your uh, tape and getting your little four quadrants. And then, you know, you can cut them and apply them wherever you need to. And like I said, make a greeting card. On, um, on this one, I did take the little word joy and I'll, I'll do it with a different color here. That's the aha moment, right? <laughs> yeah, when you get to pull off that little, uh, that little tape, it's kind of fun. Yeah, and Anne asked, how do you clean your foam stamps? So what's the best way to clean them? Say oh. you use them and they're sitting on your table all day. And now you have to go and clean them. What's the best way to clean them? So, oops, I didn't get a very good stamping on that. So the best way to clean them, honestly, if you are using watercolor is really just stamp them off really well. You know, again, this is for watercolor, stamp them off really well. A lot of times if I um, am using like a very dark color, I'll take a baby wipe, a clean baby wipe, and then just keep off stamping until it's, you know, till it's dry. Now, if you are or clean and dry, um, if you are using acrylic paints, again, run them under running water while the paint is before the paint's dry. And then always just, you know, tap, pat them lightly. Um, you don't need to um, smash or scrub or anything like that. 
that could you use it like say you've left them a little too long okay i must admit i have one yes <laughs> i have many <laughs> i used the other day that i forgot to clean so now it does have and i used acrylic paint so there's a paint in it so warm so, water um no i don't know like if it gets really dry and crusty here i'm gonna i'll turn this back too Um, so if it gets really dry and hard on there, I don't honestly know. I feel like if you just keep, because I don't, I mean, I don't really use mine after they're so hard like that. And I have let a couple get really bad. Although it's funny because if you go ahead and reapply some more acrylic paint, you can still use them, but it will give you a different, a different different stamping look. right yeah. yeah but um the thing i would try um above anything is probably a little murph like i would put it in a little layer of murphy's oil soap oh. and gently try to then you know just uh get away as much of the dry paint as you can you yeah. still can use them but they just they won't make the same exact mark yeah and it's and then again too you know some are very detailed some are very just blocky but some we, we do have very detailed and if you get a lot of paint in those super fine detaily ones i'm afraid that yeah yeah <laughs> good good do you have any other stamps that you can just show us uh just some of the newer ones that are coming out or that oh my thing? gosh um not so, demonstrate but just you know <laughs> yeah of course um, like. i'll just show you um a couple things let's see what i have um I will give you, I'll give you a sneaky peek of something that I'm very excited about. Um, and then, but I, I can't, I can't show them all to you because. No, I, I realize. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll Let's turn to your on. website but, for that. Oops, sorry. <laughs> okay. So this is super exciting for me. One of our rubber moon designers um her, her name is marilyn kelly she has been designing rubber stamps for many many years she was one of the very first rubber moon designers um back in the early 90s and um she's just oh she's just wonderful i love her art i've been i've loved her art for many years and so just recently i um asked her if she would do some art foamy designs and she agreed so i will and they're just so if you know Marilyn Kelly's work, they're just so whimsical, but they're very different. And I just, I adore them and I'm very excited about them. So I'll show you a couple, a little sneak peek of a couple. Oh. And so these are, there, these are stamped already. Obviously I don't have the actual foamy right with me, but we are going to do a special Valentine on Valentine's day. And we're going to use a little kitty with the heart. And so these are just a couple of them. And she does, and these are um, actually taken from, well, no, these aren't. Um, we did do some of her actual rubber stamp designs. And she has a lot of followers that have been, you know, had her designs for years and years. So some of her most popular um, stamp designs are now gonna be in art homes. So be looking for that. We're so excited. That is adorable, very And then both of these are done with the watercolor technique too. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Oh, exciting. And someone was asking where to find it. And it's simply artfoamies.com. Mm -hmm. Artfoamies.com. And don't forget um, to that you can join us over um, for Art Foamy Fun Friday tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central for the launch of Marilyn Kelly's new Art Foamies. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Well, here, we'll bring us back here together. That was just amazing. I'm just so... Uh, amazed at all the different things that they can do the art foamies and all the the, the stamping and how it, it actually brings so many of the different creative creatives together right because yeah. you, you have your mixed media artists you have your scrapbooker artists you have your your uh your painting you have there's just so your watercolors and home decor them, yeah you can use them everywhere right yeah yeah we love them so much <laughs> Well, thank you very much. And Let's I just want to mention to everybody that you are also going to be a part of our Pin It Canada live event on March 
fifth, and we're really excited. The more things that you're going to show uh, yes. there as well. So uh, thank, thank you. Thank you very so much, much for being on the show and have a great Valentine's weekend. Same to you. Thank you, Audrey. I'll see you soon. Uh, we'll bye. see you on Friday. All right. On Fridays. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Thanks again. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was wonderful. She uh, has so much information to share. And I know that's just a, a tidbit of what's available there. And uh, like she said, she has the Art Foamies uh, line plus the Rubber Moon Art Stamps line. So please take a look at her websites to get more information on that as well. And uh, yeah, that was just a lot of fun. Artfoamies.com. Don't forget it. I think we put it there a couple of times in the link as well. Uh, so yes, so in our next Pin of Canada Live virtual event that we were just talking about will be Friday, March the 5th, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern. So again, that will be on Facebook and we will have it up on our YouTube channel as well right after the show. Uh, we will have about five hours of nonstop creativity. Uh, it's always a lot of fun to bring it to you. And it's a lot of fun for the people that are on the show and the companies uh, that are showcasing their new products. Um, so save the date. Uh, make sure that you're there. It'll be live on Pin It Canada uh, Facebook page. Um, and you can also see we also do share it on Audrey Live and on the, our Art Waves pages. So wherever you may be, I'm sure you will find us. Um, so we have a great lineup of presentations. Uh, we still have a little bit of spots left available. So we're still looking for a few more companies and do have quite a few uh, that have to confirm yet. But some of the companies that are going to be involved are Ecstasy Craft, Pinso, Emerald Creek, Demco, Natasha Creative, Cindy Ohama, DecoArt, Art Foamies, KP, uh, Diapoxy, Renea, and more to come. So you really don't want to miss that show. February 5th, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, all on Facebook. So uh, it's just been a great, great uh, show. We've had some great Valentine's fun and Valentine's uh, crafting. So hopefully you'll get inspired to, to do something, something that makes this weekend special, even though we can't be necessarily with people, um, depending on where you are, uh, that you can't be with all your family and friends, but you certainly can take advantage of, um, of the time to show your love, appreciation, uh, kindness uh, to others. So uh, our next Audrey Live will be Thursday, February 25th, and our live guest will be Alice Paul. She's from Scrap Happy in White Court, Alberta. Uh, we're really excited. that She is just an amazing person, full of spunk and creativity, and uh, if you go to the, her, um, her Facebook page or YouTube channel, uh, go to Scrap Happy. Uh, there's some great to get an idea of what she's all about. She's just a, a great person. And I'm sure we're going to have tons of fun that day. So, uh, so again, this is, I'm Audrey DeYoung. This is Audrey Live. Take care of yourself, take care of each other. And we will see you on February 25th. Uh, have a great Valentine's weekend. Enjoy, have some fun. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>